digestion. The energy requirement of the body to conduct cellular mechanism is obtained from the intake of nutrients from the external environment. These nutrients are taken in the form of complex substances which needs to be broken down to extract energy. This process of breaking down complex food into simpler compounds such as carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals is called digestion. It is carried out by digestive system via mechanical and biochemical methods. The products are removed from the digestive tract by absorption and transported to all cells or stored until it is required by the organism. Mode of Nutrition Autotrophic Nutrition Heterotrophic Nutrition Autotrophic Nutrition in the autotrophic mode, organisms use simple inorganic matters like water and carbon dioxide in the presence of light and chlorophyll to synthesize food on their own. In other words, the process of photosynthesis is used to convert light energy into food such as glucose. Such organisms are called autotrophs. Plants, algae and bacteria, cyanobacteria, are some examples where autotrophic nutrition is observed. During photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water get converted into carbohydrates. These carbohydrates are stored in the form of starch in plants. Plants later derive the energy required from the stored starch. Plants release oxygen as the other end product. The process of photosynthesis can be explained in three stages. Absorption Leaves absorb carbon dioxide and water from the air and soil. The chlorophyll present in leaves traps the light coming from the sun. Conversion The absorbed light energy gets converted into chemical energy. Water absorbed will split into hydrogen and oxygen molecules, while ADP and inorganic phosphate and NADP plus is converted into ATP and NADPH. Reduction At last, carbon dioxide gets reduced, that is, hydrogen molecules combine with carbon to form carbohydrates, sugar molecules. All three events are not a continuous process. They may or may not take place sequentially. In plants, stomata are the openings on leaves where gaseous exchange takes place and is regulated by guard cells. Plants take in and release gases through these stomatal pores. In desert-like habitats, to avoid water loss, guard cells keep these pores closed during the daytime. Later, during the nighttime, stomata will be opened to absorb carbon dioxide and store in the vacuoles. During the daytime, they will use this stored carbon dioxide to perform photosynthesis. Other than photosynthesis, plants also depend on soil for micro and macro elements. These elements are used to synthesize proteins and other essential compounds required for the proper functioning and growth of the plants. Heterotrophic Nutrition The organisms which cannot produce food on their own and depend on other sources or organisms are called heterotrophs. This mode of nutrition is known as heterotrophic nutrition. Fungi and all the animals including humans are heterotrophs. Heterotrophs can be of many varieties depending upon their environment and adaptations. Some may eat plants, herbivores, and others eat animals, carnivores, while few eat both, omnivores. Thus, we can say survival of heterotrophs depends directly or indirectly on plants. Heterotrophs are classified into different categories based on their mode of nutrition. They are parasites, example leeches, ticks, saprophytes, example mushrooms, holozoic, example human, dogs. Feeding mechanism. Different organisms utilize different ways to digest food. Some organisms employ external digestion, whereas others use internal digestion. Many fungi, for instance, use external digestion in which 
food is digested from the outside through secreting enzymes that degrade food material and then absorb through diffusion. With internal digestion, organisms digest their food in a closed system such as through the digestive tract as in those of many animals. All animals are heterotrophs. They depend upon the ingestion of food to satisfy all their energy requirements. This contrasts with autotrophs, example green plants, which are able to prepare their food by means of photosynthesis. The foodstuffs which animals eat are tremendously varied, ranging from bacteria and planktonic life forms to large animals. It is possible to make some broad generalizations about the feeding habits of animals and to therefore classify them into several groups. Suspension feeding or ingestion of smaller particles. Aquatic organisms use suspension feeding as their major feeding mechanisms. The simplest type of suspension feeding is phagocytosis used by protozoans. This mechanism is also important in the bivalve mollusks and tadpoles. Particles are trapped as they pass through the gills and are directed towards the start of the digestive system by the action of cilia. Some urochordates produce mucus nets which trap food particles. Suspension feeding is practiced by some of the largest mammals such as baleen or right whales and some birds. In case of baleen whales, Rows of baleen plates are suspended from the roof of the mouth. When feeding, the mouth is filled with water and closed shut. Water is then squeezed out of the mouth and food is collected on the baleen plate. This process is also called as filter feeding. Ingestion of large particles The simplest way to obtain large particulate food matter is to eat inactive food masses. This has the advantage that the food does not need to be caught. The most obvious material to eat is the environment in which an animal lives. The earthworm lumbricus simply eats the earth around it. In gastropod mollusks, that is snails, there is a file-like organ called radula which sits on a tongue-like structure called the odontophore. The radula moves to and fro, scraping of food particles which are delivered to the beginning of the digestive tract. Snakes swallow food apparently larger than themselves with the aid of modification to the jaw. During seizure and swallowing of the prey, the jaw dislocates and widens as it is held together with elastic tissue. Animals that chew the prey before swallowing, there is an obvious need for teeth or teeth-like structures. In cephalopods, for example, the mouth contains two beak-like structures that can reduce the size of food particles by a biting action. In some cases, capture of prey is aided by the presence of toxins in the saliva. Snakes possess fangs which are specialized to deliver toxins, which paralyze and kill captured prey. Animals that seize their prey are called carnivores. Fluid feeding Fluid feeding is defined as getting the nutrients through an entirely liquid diet by consuming the fluids of another organism ranging from plant nectar to animal blood. Fluid feeders need some body structure or part to pierce the protective wall, skin or plant walls getting in the way of the fluid, then some proboscis like appendages for sucking out all the fluids. Examples of fluid feeders are bees, hummingbirds, spider, mosquito, leeches, ticks, etc. Bees and hummingbirds which feed on nectar produced by plants have special feeding apparatus. For example, the beaks of hummingbirds need to be elongated to enable them to reach into flowers to access the nectar. In other animals such as leeches and vampire bats, the fluid may only be obtained by piercing of skin by specialized mouth parts. Good and clear structural examples of piercing mouthparts are seen in insects such as mosquitoes. Some insects have taken this approach to feeding even further. When they bite their prey, they inject digestive enzymes into it and literally suck out the contents. Digestive system in humans The human digestive system consists of the alimentary canal which begins with an anterior opening, the mouth, and ends with the rectum. 
which opens out posteriorly through anus mouth or the receptor region the mouth leads to the buccal cavity or oral cavity the oral cavity has a number of teeth and a muscular tongue each tooth is embedded in a socket of jaw bone this type of attachment is called thecodont majority of mammals including human beings form two sets of teeth during their life a set of temporary milk or deciduous teeth replaced by a set of permanent or adult teeth this type of dentition is called diphyodont an adult human has 32 permanent teeth which are of four different types heterodont dentition namely incisors i canine c premolars pm and molars m arrangement of teeth in each half of the upper and lower jaw in the order i c p m m is represented by a dental formula in human the dental formula is 2 1 2 3 in each jaw the tongue is a freely movable muscular organ attached to the floor of the oral cavity by the frenula the upper surface of the tongue has small projections called papillae some of which bear taste buds The oral cavity leads into a short pharynx which serves as a common passage for food and air. The esophagus and the trachea windpipe opens into the pharynx. A cartilaginous flap called epiglottis prevents the entry of food into the glottis which is the opening of the windpipe during swallowing. The esophagus is a thin long tube which extends posteriorly passing through the neck, thorax and diaphragm. and leads to a j-shaped bag like structure called stomach a muscular sphincter gastroesophageal regulates the opening of esophagus into the stomach the stomach or storage region the stomach is a sac like muscular structure located in the upper left portion of the abdominal cavity below the diaphragm it serves as a storehouse of food where partial digestion takes place It has three major parts: a cardiac portion into which the esophagus opens, a fundic region, and a pyloric portion which opens into the first part of small intestine. As in other parts of the alimentary canal, columnar cells line the inner wall of the stomach and has sunken pits. Each pit consists of gastric gland. Intestine or region of absorption. Small intestine The small intestine is about 6 meters in length and 2.5 cm in thickness. Small intestine is distinguishable into three regions: a C-shaped duodenum, a long coil middle portion, jejunum, and a highly coiled ileum. The opening of the stomach into the duodenum is guarded by the pyloric sphincter. Ileum opens into the large intestine. Large intestine It consists of cecum, colon and rectum. Cecum is a small blind sac which hosts some symbiotic microorganisms. The cecum opens into the colon. The colon is divided into three parts: an ascending, a transverse and a descending part. The descending part opens into the rectum which opens out through the anus. The vermiform appendix is a narrow finger-like tubular projection. It is a vestigial organ that arises from the cecum. The wall of alimentary canal from esophagus to rectum possesses four layers namely serosa, muscularis, submucosa and mucosa. All the four layers show modification in different parts of the alimentary canal. Serosa. It is the outermost layer and is made up of a thin mesothelium which is the epithelium of visceral organs. with some connective tissues muscularis it is formed by smooth muscles usually arranged into an inner circular and an outer longitudinal layer an oblique muscle layer may be present in some regions submucosa it is formed of loose connective tissues containing nerves blood and lymph vessels in duodenum glands are also present in submucosa mucosa It is the innermost layer lining the lumen of alimentary canal. This layer forms irregular folds, rugae in the stomach and small finger-like foldings called villi in the small intestine. 
It forms crypts in between the bases of villi in the intestine called crypts of Leberkuhl and also form glands in the stomach called gastric glands. The cells lining the villi produce numerous microscopic projections called microvilli, giving a brush border appearance. Rugae, villi, and microvilli modifications increase the surface area enormously. Villi are supplied with a network of capillaries and a large limb vessel called the lacteal. Mucosal epithelium has goblet cells which secrete mucus that help in lubrication. Digestive glands The digestive glands associated with the alimentary canal include salivary glands, gastric glands, liver, pancreas. Salivary glands Saliva is mainly produced by three pairs of salivary glands the parotids, cheek, the submaxillary or submandibular, lower jaw, and the sublinguals, below the tongue. These glands, situated just outside the buccal cavity, secrete salivary juice into the buccal cavity. The amount of secretion from each gland varies with the stimulus and nature of the food. The amount is stated to be 1000 to 1500 ml each day. The chief organic substances are glycoprotein, mucin, salivary amylase, tyalin, small amounts of albumin and globulin, urea and uric acid, traces of thiocyanic acid. The inorganic substances are chloride ion, sodium ion, potassium ion, magnesium ions, calcium ions, bicarbonate ions, and hydrogen phosphate ions. Chloride ion is an important activator of amylase. Calcium ion helps to stabilize the amylase. Parotid glands One pair largest salivary gland present below pinna. A tensin's duct arises from each gland opening in a vestibule between the second molar teeth of upper jaw and cheeks. Parotid glands secrete enzymes. Viral infection of parotid glands cause mumps by paramyxovirus. Submandibular or submaxillary One pair present at the junction of upper and lower jaw in cheek region. A Wharton duct arises from each gland and opens on lower jaw. Sublingual One pair present in the floor of buccopharyngeal cavity. Six to eight ducts called the ducts of Rivinus or Bartholin's duct arises from these glands and open below tongue on the floor of the buccopharyngeal cavity. Functions of saliva Saliva moistens dry food and facilitates swallowing by lubricating action of glycoprotein. The digestion of starch begins in the mouth. Saliva contains buffering substances that is bicarbonate, phosphate and mucin. It keeps the mouth at a neutral pH and thus protects the teeth from decalcification and also keeps the mouth and teeth clean. Gastric gland The mucosa of stomach has gastric glands. The gastric glands secrete gastric juice which consists of water, electrolytes, hydrochloric acid, enzymes, mucus and intrinsic factor which help in digestion of food. Gastric glands have three major types of cells namely mucus neck cells which secrete mucus to protect the gastric mucosa from acid and enzymes in the lumen peptic or chief cells which secrete proenzyme pepsinogen and gastric lipase parietal or oxyntic cells which secrete hydrochloric acid hcl an intrinsic factor factors essential for absorption of vitamin b12 the proenzyme pepsinogen is converted into active enzyme pepsin by hydrochloric acid. The enzyme pepsin present in the gastric juice acts on the proteins of the food and break them into smaller units called peptones and proteoses. Gastric lipase helps in the breakdown of short and medium chain fats. Liver Liver is the largest gland of the body weighing about 1.2 to 1.5 kg in an adult human. It is situated in the abdominal cavity just below the diaphragm and has two lobes. The liver has three main components, hepatocytes, bile canaliculi and hepatic sinusoids. Hepatocytes 
A hepatocyte is the liver's main cell type, accounting for around 80% of the liver's volume. These cells play a role in a wide variety of secretory, metabolic and endocrine functions. Bile canaliculi Bile canaliculi are also known as bile capillaries, which are thin ducts. Grooves in the cell membranes between adjacent hepatocytes provide room for each bile canaliculi. These small ducts accumulate the bile produced by hepatocytes. From here, bile flows first into bile ductules and then into bile ducts. The bile ducts unite to form the right and left hepatic ducts. These two larger ducts themselves merge and exit the liver as the common hepatic duct. This duct then joins with the cystic duct from the gallbladder, forming the common bile duct, through which bile flows into the small intestine. Hepatic sinusoid A hepatic sinusoid is an open, porous blood space formed by fenestrated capillaries from nutrient-rich hepatic portal veins and oxygen-rich hepatic arteries. Hepatocytes are tightly packed around the fenestrated endothelium of these spaces, giving them easy access to the blood. From their central position, hepatocytes process the nutrients, toxin and waste materials carried by the blood. Materials such as bilirubin are processed and excreted into the bile canaliculi. Other materials including proteins, lipids and carbohydrates are processed and secreted into the sinusoids or just stored in the cells until called upon. The hepatic sinusoids combine and send blood to a central vein. Blood then flows through a hepatic vein into the inferior vena cava. This means that the blood and bile flow in opposite direction. Bile Bile is secreted by the liver to accomplish the emulsification of lipids in the small intestine. Hepatocytes secrete about 1 liter of bile each day. A yellow-brown or yellow-green alkaline solution, pH 7.6 to 8.6. Bile is a mixture of water, bile salts, bile pigments, phospholipids such as lecithin, electrolytes, cholesterol and triglycerides. The components most critical to emulsification are bile salts and phospholipids which have a non-polar hydrophobic region as well as polar hydrophilic region. The hydrophobic region interacts with the large lipid molecules whereas the hydrophilic region interacts with the watery chyme in the intestine. Bilirubin which is the main bile pigment is a waste product produced when the spleen removes old or damaged red blood cells from the circulation. These breakdown products including proteins, iron and toxic bilirubin are transported to the liver via the splenic vein of the hepatic portal system. In the liver, proteins and iron are recycled whereas bilirubin is excreted in the bile. It accounts for the green color of the bile. Bilirubin is eventually transformed by intestinal bacteria into stercobilin, a brown pigment that gives your stool its characteristic color. In some disease states, bile does not enter the intestine, resulting in white, acolic stool with the high fat contents, since no fats are broken down or absorbed. Pancreas The pancreas is a compound, both exocrine and endocrine, elongated organ situated between the limbs of the U-shaped duodenum. The exocrine portion secretes an alkaline pancreatic juice containing enzymes and the endocrine portion secretes hormones, insulin and glucagon. The exocrine part of the pancreas arises as little grape-like cell clusters, each called as an acinus, plural acini, located at the terminal ends of pancreatic ducts. These SNR cells secrete enzyme-rich pancreatic juice into tiny merging ducts that form two dominant ducts. The larger duct fuses with the common bile duct carrying bile from the liver and gallbladder just before entering the duodenum via a common opening, the hepatopancreatic ampulla. The smooth muscle spinster of hepatopancreatic ampulla controls the release of pancreatic juice and bile into the small intestine. The second and smaller pancreatic duct, the accessory duct, also called as duct of Santorini, runs from the pancreas directly into the duodenum 
approximately 1 inch above the hepatopancreatic ampulla. When present, it is a persistent remnant of pancreatic development. Scattered through the sea of exocrine acini are small islands of endocrine cells called the islets of Langerhans. These vital cells produce the hormones pancreatic polypeptide, insulin, glucagon, and somatostatin. Pancreatic juice The pancreas produces over a liter of pancreatic juice each day. Unlike bile, it is clear and composed mostly of water along with some salts, sodium bicarbonate, and several digestive enzymes. Sodium bicarbonate is responsible for the slight alkalinity of pancreatic juice, pH 7.1 to 8.2, which serves to buffer the acetic gastric juice in chyme, inactivate pepsin from the stomach, and create an optimal environment for the activity of pH-sensitive digestive enzymes in the small intestine. Pancreatic enzymes are active in the digestion of sugars, proteins, and fats. The pancreas produces protein digesting enzymes in their inactive forms. These enzymes are activated in the duodenum. If produced in an active form, they would digest the pancreas, which is exactly what occurs in the disease pancreatitis. The intestinal brush border enzyme enteropeptidase stimulates the activation of pancreatic trypsinogen into trypsin, which in turn changes the pancreatic enzymes procarboxypeptidase and chymotrypsinogen into their active forms, carboxypeptidase and chymotrypsin respectively. The enzymes that digest starch, amylase, fat, lipase and nucleic acids nuclease, are secreted in their active forms since they do not attack the pancreas as the protein digesting enzymes. Pancreatic Secretion Regulation Regulation of pancreatic secretion is a job of hormones and parasympathetic nervous system. The entry of acidic chyme into the duodenum stimulates the release of secretin, which in turn causes the duct cells to release bicarbonate-rich pancreatic juice. The presence of proteins and fats in the duodenum stimulates the secretion of cholecystokinin CCK, which then stimulates the acini to secrete enzyme-rich pancreatic juice and enhance the activity of secretin. Digestion of food The process of digestion include six activities ingestion, propulsion, mechanical or physical digestion, chemical digestion, absorption, and defecation. Ingestion, propulsion, and mechanical digestion the first of these processes, ingestion, refers to the entry of food into the alimentary canal through the mouth. The buccal cavity performs two major functions, mastication of food and facilitation of swallowing. The teeth and the tongue, with the help of saliva, masticate and mix up the food thoroughly. The saliva secreted into the oral cavity contains electrolytes and enzymes such as salivary amylase and lysozyme. Mucus in saliva helps in lubricating and adhering the masticated food particles into a bolus which is passed down the digestive tract by successive waves of muscular contraction called peristalsis. Peristalsis and deglutination constitute the propulsion of food in digestive tract. The gastroesophageal spinster controls the passage of food into the stomach. The pathway is Bolus is conveyed into the pharynx and then into the esophagus by swallowing or deglutination. The bolus further passes down through the esophagus by peristalsis into the stomach. Chemical Digestion The chemical process of digestion is initiated in the oral cavity by the hydrolytic action of the carbohydrate splitting enzyme, the salivary amylase. It brings about the hydrolysis of starch and glycogen. About 30% of starch is hydrolyzed here by this enzyme at an optimum pH 6.8 into a disaccharide maltose. Chloride ion activates the enzyme. Salivary amylase is readily inactivated at pH 4.0 or less. The enzyme can act on the food for a short time, 5 to 6 minutes, which is of little significance. Lysozyme present in saliva acts as an antibacterial agent that prevents infections. 
So the digestive action on food in the mouth is soon ceased due to the acidic environment when HCL secretion begins in stomach. The stomach stores the food for 4 to 5 hours. The food mixes thoroughly with the acidic gastric juice of the stomach by the churning movements of its muscular wall. This mixed food is called the chyme. The proenzyme pepsinogen on exposure to hydrochloric acid gets converted into the active enzyme pepsin, the proteolytic enzyme of the stomach. Pepsin converts protein into proteoses and peptones, peptides. The mucus and bicarbonates present in the gastric juice play an important role in lubrication and protection of the mucus epithelium from excoriation by the highly concentrated hydrochloric acid. HCl provides the acidic pH 1.8 optimal for pepsin. Renin is a proteolytic enzyme found in the gastric juice of infants which help in the digestion of milk proteins. Small amounts of lipases are also secreted by gastric glands. Various types of movements are generated by the muscularis layer of the small intestine. These movements help in a thorough mixing up of the food with various secretions in the intestine and thereby facilitate digestion. The bile, pancreatic juice and the intestinal juice are the secretions released into the small intestine. Pancreatic juice and bile are released through the hepatopancreatic duct. The pancreatic juice contains inactive enzymes, trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, procarboxypeptidases, amylases, lipases, and nucleases. Trypsinogen is activated by an enzyme, enterokinase, secreted by the intestinal mucosa into active trypsin, which in turn activates the other enzymes in the pancreatic juice. The bile released into the duodenum contains bile pigments, bilirubin and miliverdin, bile salts, cholesterol and phospholipids, but no enzymes. Bile helps in emulsification of fats, that is, breaking down of fats into very small micelles. Bile also activates lipases. The intestinal mucosal epithelium has goblet cells which secrete mucus. The secretion of the brush border cells of mucosa along with the secretions of the goblet cells constitute the intestinal juice or succus entricus. This juice contains a variety of enzymes like disaccharidases, example maltase, dipeptidases, lipases, nucleosidases, etc. The mucus along with bicarbonates from the pancreas protects the intestinal mucosa from acid as well as provide an alkaline medium pH 7.8 for enzymatic activities. Submucosal glands, Brunner's glands also help in this. Protein, proteoses and peptones which are partially hydrolyzed proteins in the chyme reaches the intestine and are acted upon by the proteolytic enzymes of pancreatic juice. Absorption the breakdown of biomacromolecules occurs in the duodenum region of the small intestine. The simple substances thus formed are absorbed in the jejunum and ileum regions of the small intestine. Absorption of completely digested food takes place in the ileum. The wall of the ileum has finger-like projections called villi that increase the surface area for absorption of digested food. The villi are richly supplied with blood vessels to carry the absorbed food into the blood capillaries. From the blood capillaries, absorbed materials are transported by veins to the liver and then to the heart for distribution to different parts of the body. The undigested and unabsorbed substances are passed on to the large intestine. No significant digestive activity occurs in the large intestine. The function of large intestine are Absorption of some water, minerals and certain drugs Secretion of mucus which help in the adhering of waste, undigested particles together and lubricating it for an easy passage Defecation The undigested, unabsorbed substances called feces enter into the cecum of the large intestine through the ileocecal valve which prevents the backflow of fecal matter It is temporarily stored in the rectum till defecation Regulation of gastrointestinal tract The activities of gastrointestinal tract are under the neural and hormonal control for proper coordination of different parts. 
the sight smell and or or the presence of food in the oral cavity can stimulate the secretion of saliva gastric and intestinal secretion are also similarly stimulated by neural signals the muscular activities of different parts of the alimentary canal can also be moderated by neural mechanisms both local and through central nervous system cns hormonal control of the secretion of digestive juices is carried out by local hormones produced by the gastric and intestinal mucosa the role that some of these hormones play is outlined ghrelin is produced in the stomach and its function is to activate brain and signals it to increase appetite gastrin is produced in the stomach when it is stretched its function is to stimulate the release of gastric juice rich in pepsin and hydrochloric acid secretin is produced in the duodenum and its function is to stimulate the pancreas to produce alkaline secretions as well as slowing the emptying of the stomach cholecystokinin cholecystokinin cck is produced in the duodenum it reduces appetite slows down emptying of the stomach and stimulates the release of bile from the gall bladder Peptide YY PYY is produced in the ileum of the small intestine as well as parts of the large intestine. It plays a role in slowing down the passage of food along the gut which increases the efficiency of digestion and nutrient absorption after meal. Glucagon like peptide 1 GLP1 is produced in the small intestine and colon and has multiple actions including inhibition of gastric emptying and appetite as well as the stimulation of insulin release.